Hey guys, so today what I'm going to try and do for you is summarize the 19 Board of Directors platforms. And before I do that, I'm going to explain uh, kind of the roles and responsibilities of the board. I sat down and read all 19 board applications and it was basically the most painful thing I've ever done. I'm pretty sure half of you don't even know what you're running for because your platforms are just, just garbage or non-existent in some cases. So I'm going to try and help you guys out so you don't have to go through the pain I did and, and summarize these. And then I'm going to give every candidate my suggestion on whether you should vote, not vote, or I'm completely indifferent because I just can't make a decision. So first of all, I want to clear something up. The Board of Directors is the Board of Directors for the Students' Union, not the University. That's more a point for the, uh, the candidates to take note of. You are applying to be on the board of directors for the Students' Union. The Students' Union is not the university. They have different responsibilities. Okay, so then what's the responsibility of our board of directors? We have a policy governance system, which means the board of directors is responsible for setting long-term goals, connecting with students, oversight, and managing the president. That's it. They do finances, and they monitor the president through executive limitations and by setting ends. Executive limitations basically say what the president cannot do, and ends are saying what he has to do. So our, our organization has four ends and more ELs than I really care about. This means that our board of directors is not an operating board. They have no say in operations. The president is responsible for the company's operations. So, directors, take the fucking study space out of your platforms. You can do nothing about the study space. You can't do anything about food. These aren't your responsibilities. Your responsibilities are to monitor the president, so your platform should focus on how you're gonna do that. That being said, I'm gonna try and keep this as short as possible, but there's 19 of them, so it's gonna take a bit longer than I'd like it to. Okay, so last thing you need to know is that our board of directors has 15 seats, which means 15 people will be elected. There are 19 candidates, hence why none of them have campaigns. So hopefully, this might drive some of you to campaign. Okay, candidate number one, April. Platform has a lovely, touching, personal first paragraph, and then her second paragraph gets into believing in the voice of students, making sure things are communicated, even uses the word holistic. You know, big ups for cool vocabulary. And directly mentions advocating for students. So far, this is all really good. This is exactly what a director does. In my opinion, you should have stopped your platform there because then you descend into making study space more efficient and expanding and, and building more. Like, it almost sounds like you want to build study space and I, I don't know about you, but A, we don't own the campus. We own one building. And second of all, you want to build study space. A, that's operational, so it's not under the board. B, I, 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 b build, build, like put up a building. I, I can't get past that. End of the day, my vote recommendation is actually undecided. Uh, you have to think about that one for yourself. Candidate number two is Brian Wilson, and I loved the intro of his platform. And then he talks about focusing on communication and connecting with students, one of the biggest aspects of the board's role. He goes on to talk about diversity and the uniqueness of each Laurier student and how the organization needs to take that into consideration when it's making decisions. And most importantly, he doesn't talk about anything operational. He demonstrates an actual understanding of what a board's role is. So my vote recommendation on Brian is a definite yes. Candidate number three is Colin Atchison, and this is probably one of the best platforms I actually had to endure reading. He talks about how students are poorly represented and that this is the board's whole job. Then he focuses on reciprocal communication between students and Ulusu. He even focuses on how this communication is really important around spending and where student money is going. Finally, he talks about multi-campus representation and advocacy. Good buzzwords, but actually elaborates on what he's saying. This is exactly what a board platform should look like. And he even mentions holding the president responsible, AKA the board's whole role. So, man, awesome research. This guy's good. My vote recommendation is without a doubt a yes. Okay, candidate number four is Courtney Yol. I, I don't know. First thing she talks about is creating awareness about resources. This is good, that's, that's a good start. And then she brings up the Wulusu clique and trying to break this and bring Wulusu events and services to the greater Laurier population. 
Also really good, also a big objective of the board. However, then you descend into wanting to work with coordinators and help them market their services and I, I think you might be stepping on some toes here because that's A, very operational and B, they have VPs and a marketing department. Uh, so I'd be careful about this. Um, but you do talk about multi-campus unification, which is cool and really important as you know this whole multi-campus thing becomes a, a bigger and bigger issue. So overall, I, I would give her a yes vote. Candidate number five, we have Elias Eric Ken and, 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 uh, I don't know. But his platform focuses on accountability and providing students with the best return on investment. You must be a biz kid, but good phrase anyways. Also focuses on financial prudency. Overall, Elias's platform is, is pretty short, uh, but he hits on some good points. So, for vote, I, I'll say yeah. Candidate number seven is John Drimmy. Okay, okay. We need more Smiths running in this election is my real point here. But his platform had an error when I tried to open it, which I don't really think is his fault. Someone should look into that. I'm not gonna give him a vote recommendation because I have no idea. Unless he purposely corrupted his platform, like those programs you see online to corrupt your assignments before you submit them so you can buy an extra day because then your prof emails you and it's like your assignment doesn't open. If you did that, that's not cool. But otherwise, you know, maybe just look into it. Candidate number eight, John Pear. Despite having some atrocious grammar, dude, please edit your platform. If I have to read 19 of these, and supposedly every student's supposed to read 19 of them, I think that's gonna happen. But people are supposed to read these, and your grammar sucks, and it, it just makes it really shitty. Shittier. Shittier. It's already shitty. First John starts talking about representation, transparency, and I listed representation twice in my notes. This is good. Good start. But the rest of your platform completely kills it. Because then you descend into all operational talk. You start talking about student services and study space, which we all know is my favorite issue. And then you start talking about the internet and class sizes. None of this is Walusu. And it's all operational even if it was Walusu. Like I said at the very beginning, this is the board of directors for the students union, not the university. You don't even know the role you're going into. So my vote recommendation is probably a no, because class size, that like, yeah, classes are big, but you can't do anything about it on the board of directors, board of governors maybe, or the senate, or, yeah. Let's move on. Candidate number nine, which means, yes folks, we are halfway done. Thank heavens. Jordan Epstein. Platform was really short, but he focuses on accountability, increasing transparency, and every other major board buzzword. Now, your platform could have been longer, but he's one of the most reasonable voices that sits on our board now, and is without a doubt the most knowledgeable person about Walusu in existence anywhere in the world. So, 100%, yeah, it's a yes vote recommendation. Candidate number 10, guys. Brace yourself for this one. You, you are saying... I'm... The first thing in his platform is a bus that runs constantly between here and Brantford. It, a. It's operational. B. What? You want to run a bus between here and Brantford? We might be the same Laurier, but we don't have the same students. There are not people who study on both campuses every day. That's not a thing, because that would make no sense, because it's an hour away. Not to mention, do you have any idea how much that bus would cost? In fact, I can't even spend time on this bus thing, because there's more. Goes on to talk about specific clubs, and, and how he wants to introduce specific clubs. Dude, to start a club at Laurier, all you need is, uh, I think, like, 20, 15 signatures, I don't know the number, on a page, and then you just submit it with a budget, and you start a club. You don't need to be on the board. In fact, the board doesn't start clubs. He goes on to talk about how he wants the president to expand on the events that Lusu offers. Okay, again, dude, 
operational. And it's not the president, it's the programming department. That's a VP position. You talking about starting Laurier Fest, I did, like three day, it, it's three days long, and it, it, I guess it's gonna be like Oktoberfest, but just for Laurier? Dude, just go to Oktoberfest. It's all Laurier students anyways. And this isn't the book, oh my gosh. Okay, there's more. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He wants the president to make more clubs. The president doesn't make clubs. Students make clubs, and then they submit it to the union, they get approval, and the union gives them money to run their club. Did you do any research on this organization? It's operational, and it, he doesn't make clubs. His platform shows zero knowledge of the world, none whatsoever, so my vote recommendation is a no. All right, candidate number 11 is Kate Stevenson. And the first thing I gotta say is, why is it that all current board members who are up for re-election have the shortest platforms ever? Come on guys, put, put a little effort in. That being said, she focuses on transparency, student connection, and long-term planning and forward thinking. Um, all really nice. My vote recommendation very quickly. Um, not overly excitedly, but yeah, it, it's a yes. Candidate number 12 is Laura Bassett. And I'm, I'm not really sure how I feel about this platform. Your platform's kind of scattered. Uh, you talk about study space, again, operational, but you do bring up multi-campus. You are a Brantford student, but you bring up multi-campus, which is good, that is important. But then, y y your platform, there's like an entire half page that talks about the direct-to-you uh, prescription service that the UDesk offers, and how it's good. And I don't really get why at all. Um, I, I just don't understand why that's there. I, I'm at a loss. It, it's kind of well researched. You seem to know a lot about the students' union, but I'm not sure you know a lot about your role on board. So, this is going to be one of those ones. My vote recommendation is a little unsure. Uh, Maybe take a look at her platform, decide for yourself. I, I can't decide. All right, candidate number 13, Matt Kasserman. Dude, your platform is three solid typed pages long. Everyone else's is half a page to one. I, I had to like take a break and go do a shot after I read it. It's good, but it's so long. No one's gonna read it. I didn't want to finish it. To be honest, I started skimming halfway through. But he's up for re-election. He can't decide whether he wants to talk in the first or third person as the whole platform, which kind of got on my nerves, hence the shot afterwards. But he is a really dedicated board member. Talks about how he always does his research, and re-elected candidates are good. Most importantly, I think what I give you props for is last election you promised to make electoral reform an issue, and you got it on the referendum ballot this year. So he does get major points for actually following through on election promises. My recommendation is still a yes. I had to sit down because this is getting exhausting. But candidate number 14 is Matt McLean. One of the really cool things in Matt's platform actually is he talks about having been a student trustee. If you don't know what that is, I'm not explaining it, go Google it. Um, but that's pretty cool. I, I do give you credit for that kind of experience. He mentions the Malusu values and focusing on sustainability in his platform. But for a lot of words, and it is a word-heavy platform, there's not a lot of substance. You don't really say much of anything in terms of what you want to do. So my vote recommendation is a little unsure. Um, uh, I'm kind of on the fence with this one. Okay, candidate number 15 I'm gonna stand back up for, because this one you need to pay attention to. This is Michael Case, and by this point I've been reading platforms for longer than I'd really like to, and this kept me interested. This is by far the best platform that I read. First thing he talks about, focusing on having diverse methods of communication with students. Second thing, puts a big emphasis on getting feedback, surveys, stuff from students communicating on the performance of the students' union. Three, fixing the disconnect between the union and students so they understand how to utilize the services that the union offers. Ah, oh, this is amazing, and it's just so on the ball. He knows exactly what the rule is. He talks about all of the main objectives of what a good director needs to be doing. If you are going to vote for anyone, cast a ballot to vote for this guy. 
because this was the best platform I read. So my vote recommendation is 100% a massive yes. Number 16 is Nicole something. I don't know. Her platform has a really touching intro story, uh, really drawn out, but really touching intro story, and she focuses largely on giving Branford a voice. The whole platform talks about her personal experiences and all the good life skills she's learned in it, and it's a great cover letter. Girl, use this as a cover letter, because it is Bob, you will get the job, but it is not a platform. It is a cover letter. There's no real goals, no objectives, no real knowledge of the organization is demonstrated anywhere in this cover letter. And you seem really sweet, so my recommendation is go do some research on the organization and run again next year. But for this year, my vote recommendation is definitely a no. Candidate number 17, we are almost there, is Sean Yu. And we're in the same program, Double Majors in Philosophy and Political Science. It's pretty cool, but his platform focuses on feedback, open communication, and breaking the disconnect. Done. Boom. Awesome. My vote recommendation is yeah. Let's move on. Candidate number 18. There's only two left. Please stay with me. It's TJ Edmondson. His platform starts talking about uh, the sense of community we have here, communication, accountability, and then he has a paragraph where he really, he not even really, he literally just lists off buzzwords, ends, EL, strategic goals, values, it's literally just a list. And then he descends into operations, the dining hall, and security, and they're important points, but they're not part of the board. You clearly did some research, enough to memorize buzzwords, but you have no understanding of the actual role. You didn't spend enough time to actually understand what any of those words mean. So, my honest vote recommendation on this one is a no. The last candidate, if you're still even watching, this is the last one. Number 19, Scott Fleming. <laughs> Shit, I'm just gonna read you his whole platform. And I know, don't start sweating, you're like, what? This is gonna be like another 20 minutes. No, look down, it's almost done. I'm going to read you his whole platform, wait for it. I believe student government needs to be accountable and transparent, particularly when dealing with political and financial issues. I also believe that the status quo should be questioned when necessary. That's it! That, 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 you, you didn't say anything. That is not a platform. That's like the opening line of an essay, and a shitty opening line of an essay, because it's really overarching. There's a, that's not a platform, man. Right? A platform. You've been on the bod for two years and that's the best you can come up with? All you did was stick 20 buzzwords into two sentences. I just, I... It's frustrating because it seems like you don't care about being there. If you cared about getting back onto the board, you'd write a real platform. And, not only is it two sentences, but you submitted it late because the first time I checked the website to get all the director's platforms, yours wasn't there yet. So, my vote recommendation is a no because you don't even care enough to put in the effort. So, hopefully this was helpful for you. I don't know about you, but my soul hurts a little. Maybe yours does too. All right, so you do not need to vote for 15 candidates. You can vote for up to 15, but you can also only vote for three. So pick however many you like and vote for those ones. Second of all, I need to put in the disclaimer that I did film this before the open forum. I know it's coming out the day of the open forum, but I filmed it on the weekend. Lastly, it's done. It's over. Go drink some alcohol. That's what I'm going to go do. This is finished. Board is done. The topic's dead.